Well, hello everybody. Today is Friday, March 5th, 2021, and this is floss tube number eight. And today I have a few finishes to show you. I have some progress on the stitch alongs that I'm doing, and I also have some new starts for March, and I'm gonna show you some of my progress for my other starts. And then at the end of this, you know, after I show you everything, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I keep all of my cross stitch supplies organized. I've been getting asked that a lot. So I thought at the end of this video, I'd walk around my sewing room here and show you inside my drawers and cupboards and things like that and show you where I keep my flosses and linens and, and how I organize them. But first up, I wanna show you my one fully finish that I have, which is right here, this Sweet Land of Liberty by Blackbird Designs. This is a little pillow that I finished. Now this is the one that I started for my son, my oldest son Ben's birthday. I, so I started this uh, last month in February and it's out of this book right here, The Sweet Land of Liberty. And there's five designs in this book and I've just done the one so far, which I don't know if you can see this, but let me pull it up a little bit closer. This right here, this is the one that this is right here. So they finished it into a circle, but I did mine into a square and I kind of took a few liberties because they had this flower right here and then no design right here because it went into a circle. So I went ahead and just mirror imaged the flower over here and the corner of the house was kind of not stitched in theirs because it was circular. And um, so I just kind of squared it off down here because I just wanted a cute little house because what I fell in love with um, is this flag hanging down here and the little buntings in the windows. So I really wanted to do that and just put it into a square pillow. And so that's what that looks like. I just put some calico on the back, uh, my be, be Cute Lace right here on the back like I showed you in my pillow parade floss tube. And I think that was in floss tube number six. I showed you a few other ways that I finish pillows, but I finish them in a lot of ways. But I do just sometimes just sew around and leave an opening down here and whip stitch closed or do the blind stitch closed. Um, and I especially do that when I know I'm putting trim around the outside, but I just wanted this one very, very simple. So my favorite way to do it is to sew all the way around and then put you know, cut a little, you know, like a slit back here so that I can stuff it and then I cover it with wool or lace or something like that. So the reason I like to do it that way, it's very fast, it's very simple, but I get all of my edges very smooth and I get concerned sometimes when I'm using linen that I'm gonna, um, you know, make this piece go a little bit smaller up here like when I leave the opening closed. So this is kind of my favorite way to do it. And then after I do my pillows, I like to press them from the back, not from the front, and just to make them a little bit flatter so that you can see the design nicely. So there's that one. Here's the flosses that I used. I will be doing a few more projects out of here, but um, so I keep all, I keep count of my fabric, keep count. I keep track of my fabric, meaning what count I did. This one I did 36 count flax and linen, and I put my threads either on the back of the card or somewhere on the card, like if I have any changes, I'll put those on there. And in fact, if you want to see those changes, I'll just show them to you. So I used all of the called for over dies except for you know, I substituted a few. And so I usually write those down there. And uh, as you know by now, I usually switch out my reds and my greens are usually the first ones I switch out. But anyway, that kind of took a long time just to show you <laughs> my first fully finish, but there's that one, love it. That will go in my little uh, patriotic bowl or on the shelf or something when it comes time to start decorating for summer. And then my next finish that I have is the friendship, friendship Sampler that I talked about 
when Christy was here for my last floss tube and this is one of the projects that we were doing together. And so I really, really love this one. It's just a tiny, cute little sampler. And uh, it's by Maury Blackburn here. And here's the title of it, Friendship Sampler. And so this is my finish on it. Let me bring that up so you can see it just a little bit closer. Can you see, is that close enough, Cassidy? Can they see that? Just, yep, that's perfect. Okay. And so I put my initials here and then the year. And I just, I love this saying. I did, I totally, completely changed the color. See, here's, again, the cover. There's my colors. I used all DMCs. I have them in this bag right here. And so I stitched on 36 count Tyco. I think that's how you say that, Edinburgh Linen. By Picture This Plus, I stitched one over two. So these are, I know I've talked about these before. Maybe I haven't talked about them for a little while because I just use them so much. But these are my library cards. I used to use um, old vintage library cards and Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop saw these and she's the one who produces my cross stitch notions, a lot of them. And so she saw these and she's like, we need to make these so that we can put them on the back of, you know, all the projects and things like that. So these are the Be In My Bonnet library cards. They have a little envelope and then you put in here, but I love to put the information on there just for these kind of reasons. So here's my DMC that I used. So I'll just put that right there so you can see that in case you're interested in that. And it's just nice to have some information on that. So when this gets framed, I'll be taking this over to Jamie at the Craft Center next week to get this framed. I really want to find a vintage-y looking frame. I think that'll be fun. I love the size of that sampler. And um, so I'll glue this on the back of the frame so that I always have this information from this library card. And um, when I have projects like the pillow, Cash, you want to grab me that pillow in the library card right there? Mm -hmm. So you know how I showed you the pillow and then I have the library card. Obviously, I'm not going to glue that on the back of the pillow, but I do have a place in my red cabinet that I just put all of my little cards that I have filled out and kept in my project bag. Once the project is finished, then I take the cards that are like pillows and something like that that I can't glue the back of the card on and I keep them all together. So I still have reference that all I have to do is go through and you know, look through it. So, all right. So there's the friendship sampler. Love that. And let me put that back on there. And then I'm super happy that I have this one finished. This is Oh Joyous Day. Okay, tell me if I need to move that around, That's sis. Perfect. So that, okay. So this is Oh Joyous Day by Blackbird Designs. Here's, here's the chart. And... Here's my flosses that I used. And I did change a few things. I did um, this on 36 count winter white by Seraphim fabric. And I did it one over one. I'm mean, excuse me, one over two, not one over one. Did do some one over one here. This is the one that's the wedding sampler for my other parents, which are my husband's parents. And so this is all one over one right here. So I have their initials and the month that they were married and the year that they were married in 1953 is also, oh, it's down here, but it's not one over one. So this is just the one over one part right here. But I love, love how this turned out. Let me bring it a little bit closer, maybe so you can see. There's satin stitches in here and eyelets and, you know, Smyrna crosses. I love it. I love the specialty. It's not full of specialty but it just has enough to just kind of you know make it interesting but I love this stitch it's so beautiful and um, I love how large this bird is compared to the house and the flowers I just love stuff like that and so I started this last Thanksgiving and I just finished it a few weeks ago and I'll be taking it over to Jamie at the craft center here in Utah to be framed as well. And I did two changes. I used all of the call for floss except for 
I used, um, I changed my reds and a uh, red and a pink. So I used old brick for like the pink or medium red or light red, whatever you want to call it. And then for my red, I used pomegranate, which I use quite a bit. So there's the pomegranate for my red. Other than that, I used everything else that called for. And so I'm always happy to get a stitch like this completed. That's kind of like a larger stitch and I've been working on for a while. All right, so those are my finishes. Now I wanna talk about, let me pull this stack in here. I am participating in several stitch alongs and so I wanted to talk about those and show you my progress. So last time I talked to you about, well, I did show you this bag already. And last time I talked to you about the I Belong to the Cross Stitch Nation. And this is by uh, Beth Twist, Heartstring Samplery. And this is what I have done so far. And let me pull that up so you can see. I'll try to move slow so I can kind of... And uh, here's my threads for it. I did post these on Instagram, the threads that I'm using. I just pulled threads from my stash. And I am stitching on 35 count linen, the color linen, but it's linen by Weeks Dye Works. And my goal going forward with this is I'm just gonna do like one of these cute stitching people every week. So next, next I'll be working on this cute stitcher lady. And if I can do one of these a week and then finish this bottom one, I think that's good. So if you're stitching along with me, and I hope you are, and I've seen so many of you on Instagram, and um, the hashtag is Cross Stitch Nation S-A-L, and if you want to use that, and uh, as you know, Christy's stitching this with me as well, and because uh, she always wants, wants to join in on the fun too, she's so awesome, and so we're stitching that, but I did want to tell you something else, look at this darling mug. Cassidy will always tell me when I need to bring it into the screen <laughs> better. So I hope you all can see that without too much glaring. But um, I got this from D uh, Beth Twist, and it's on her website called Heartstrings Samplery, and she has several mugs. I actually have the Baby It's Cold Outside one as well. But look how cute that is. And uh, I love it. I love it so much. I love this chart. I love the mug. Thanks, Beth, so much. And uh, I'm gonna be, I've been enjoying my chamomile tea in this mug. So I just thought I should show that to you. Okay, so my next one, this is my um, one of my Christie bags that Christie made for me. This is out of my Prim fabric. And of course I use this bag because it's my Prim and Proper stitch along. Here, let's put that over there. And so this is now started. This is hosted by Kimberly over at um, Fat Quarter Shop and on their floss tube, the, um, what is it? Is it the Fat Quarter floss tube? FQS floss tube? That's what it is, FQS floss tube. You know, and she does that every Wednesday. And so this has just started. This is my start on it. This is um, stitched on 36 count beach brew. And the sample was done on my Prim 25 count Lugana. And so when whatever the sample's done on, I like to do something different just to show you kind of size different, color different. Although this color is pretty close to my Prim, as you can see. But this is the start that I have. And I'm using the Call 4 DMC. In this chart, There's uh, the sample is done with my uh, Arafloss. And then I have DMC that I've called for. And so... So far, that's what I've been using. If something, as I stitch along, something isn't showing up on this cloth, you know how sometimes you have to change up the DMC or a color according to your cloth to make sure it shows up. But so far, that's what I've pulled is the call for DMC. I have them in this cute little, little vintage lady bag. And uh, so that's prim and proper. 
This next one I've been working on for a while. This is also hosted by Kimberly and her floss tube every Wednesday morning. She does the live stream. She does such a great job and it's so fun to tune in and watch. So if you guys haven't done that, you probably, you know, would really enjoy that. So I recommend watching Kimberly and seeing all the progress that she's making and all the things that she is stitching over there. So this is my sew by row. This is how much I have finished on it so far. And I'm using on this one, um, I'm using the DMC and the sample is done on 25 count Lugana and um, it was done on cloud. So this one is my 20 count cork, which is one of my newer vintage cloths and it's called Prairie. It's in the color Prairie, it's 20 count cork and I'm stitching one over one, which is why it looks so tiny because it, it is so tiny. But this is going to fit in an eight by 10 frame. So I'm pretty excited about that. I have like a denim colored one. And as soon as I finish stitching this, I'll stick that in there. I'm using one of my decorator weight uh, bags and using my floss flowers to hold my DMC in this project. I think it's so fun to use all different things to hold your flosses. Like this one, I'm using all DMC except for one here in this Ann Morrison. And I'm, I have a, the DMCs instead of on a ring. I have them in um, my Sew Vintage bag. This is one of my bags that I do uh, through Riley Blake. And uh, so I keep all of those in there. This is Ann Morrison. This is the one that... Um, is by Hands Across the Sea that is an exclusive for traditional stitches. I'm um, stitching along with so many others and Christy as well. So I think Christy's a little bit farther ahead than I am though. I haven't been able to put too much more time into this, but I did was able to add a couple of rows and, um, and I'm stitching on 36 count parchment by Weeks Dye Works, one over two. And so here's all the DMC that I'm using, but I really, which is what was called for, she calls for silks and the DMC conversion. So I'm using all of those except for, I just really wasn't happy with the aqua. And DMC, for some reason, I don't know, sometimes I just can't find the right combination that I want. So I threw in this mint julep by Classic Color Works, and that's what I'm gonna be using for the blue in this. I couldn't use the blue that um, that she called for, that Nicola called for, because it's just too light on my fabric. You can see the difference in the fabrics that I'm using, so it just doesn't show up on this. So the changes, here's the changes that I did for those called for DMCs. Bring it up a little bit closer if you're interested in that. There's my changes. Okay, so that's it for my progress in my stitch alongs. And so now I wanna show you my progress in some of my previous ones like from January on. So of course I'm always doing my red sampler that I've talked about a few floss tubes ago, how I always take and just do one or two threads before I start any other project when I'm stitching at night. Before I start on whatever stitch I'm going to do that night, I just go ahead, pull my red sampler out. Currently I'm doing Red Rhapsody and by Rosewood Manor. And my uh, method of madness for this is I'm going to try to fill in all of this top part right here and so that I can go down and work on all the roses. And I think that little pillow is adorable as well. But I really want to get, get to these roses. And so what I'm doing um, this on is 36 count flax Edinburgh linen, one over two. And this silks that I'm using is called Kringle's Coat Color and it's by Silken Colors and I just love it. I love the slight variegation of it. And then I just put it on a ring. And this is one of my 
flea market charms. These are one of my charms that uh, I designed to go with my fabric collection flea market. And uh, Riley Blake produces my fabric and my sewing notions. And so that's one of them that's just new and I love that. And it was fun to just add that charm to that. But I think that's gonna be fun. And as soon as I finish this one, then I'll move on to another red sampler and start stitching that in the same way. Okay, let's put that on there. Okay, so this one is when I started in January for one of my brother's birthdays. I am stitching this on 25 count Lugana farmhouse and I'm stitching two over two on this one. And this is by Plum Street Samplers, the Milk and Cream Company and uh, designed by Paulette Stewart. And I love this. So I'm doing, okay, so here's all my threads. Here's my progress so far on it. I mean, I still have, let's see, can you see that good? I'm just gonna pull your threads up so they can oh, okay. see All right, so you can see I still have, you know, the trees, the sky, the clouds, I have to fill in these hills. I, have to, I haven't even started the cute little milking lady, but uh, you know, I've made pretty good progress. And I'm super happy and I love, I love this cow. I mean, this milk cow is the cutest. Don't you think all, all um, black and white cows, all their spots should be shaped like quilt blocks, right? <laughs> so here's my colors. So I'll lay the colors there as you can see them. And here's the colors that I'm using. Bring that up so it's a little bit closer. In case you're interested in that. Now, whenever I say this, I'm like, take a screenshot or whatever, copy it down. And that's why I try to keep it still and slow. But I've had a few people ask me, how do you take a screenshot? So I guess every phone's different, so I can't really say. But, um, you know, I'm sure you can Google how to take a screenshot or whatever. But a lot of times I'm watching, when I watch Floss Tube, I'm watching it on my smart TV on my big screen. So when I need to see something like this, I just take a picture of it with my phone. And then I have it saved in my phone that I can either just copy off for my personal use or I can just take a piece of paper and write down the colors. And you're totally fine, you know, doing that with my stuff. That doesn't bother me at all. So, so there's the, let me uncover that and show you that stitching a little bit closer. That's why I like to have Cassidy here filming with me. And um, because I like this format that you can see things closer, but because she's behind the camera, I can't really tell if I'm putting things in front of the camera correctly or not. So sometimes you might see her uh, cute little hand coming in and pulling things in. Okay, so this next one is one of my favorite, Land That I Love by Teresa Kogut. Love, love, love this chart. And uh, I'm doing it on 36 count platinum by Weeks Dye Works, one over two. And I'm using all of the called for threads except for two changes, I think. Three changes. <laughs> there she is again, moving things. Okay, so here's my changes that I made. And once again, that involves red, you know, I changed my reds, but I changed my white. I remembered to, um, I think Teresa called for 712. I can't even remember, but I think she called for 712 or Ecru or something. But on this fabric, I needed something a little bit brighter white. So I chose to use the 3865. But um, there's that. And did I say what cloth it is? The platinum? Yeah, 36 count platinum. And so last time I showed you this, I just had this motif done. Um, and I was able to do this one and do these cute little quilt block looking. They look like little applique blocks to me. And then I started on this row. So I'll be going across here and finishing up the alphabet. what I do with the chart? I'll hand me the chart real quick. So I do have to, yeah, finish this, finish this row. And then I'm just gonna keep moving across here. Next, I'll be doing the eagle in the blueberry bowl, or at least I think those are blueberries. That's what they look like to me. And I'll just keep going across 
and making progress on that. This is the stitch that I'm going to keep working on because I want to finish this by July. Okay, this is a this is a, one of my favorite stitches that I have going right now, and I just really have a hard time putting it away. But I love, I, I have a hard time putting every stitch away. I put it away because it's time to work on the next one or I have a new start, and then I fall in love with that one. So that's what's so amazing about cross stitch is because it just you know, it keeps us motivated, keeps us going, and we just want to stitch all the things. And again, I told you last time, you know, I have a 400-year plan. <laughs> I'm still continuing that, and I'm just having fun. So this is by um, Shakespeare's Peddler, uh, Teresa, or aka Kitten Stitcher, and this is a Savior's Praise. And this is kind of turned into my Sunday stitch, and what could be more appropriate you know, to stitch on Sunday. And I started this on Christmas and I am stitching on 36 count beach brew. I'm using all of the flosses that Teresa called for, which are anchor flosses and a few weeks dye works. But I did switch out my red, um, all my flosses, all my colors are in here in this cute little rooster bag that says be free. That's the only marking it has on it. And so I'm using all of the call for in here, again, that are anchor, but I'm using 3831 for the red. And instead of 3777, and I'm using 320 teal for the very lightest green because it did not show up on my cloth, but Last time I showed you, I had just finished filling the inside, just kind of did the bones, the outside bones of the basket, and just had everything on the inside finished. I'm still working on these little feather-looking stitches, but I was able to, this week, fill in my basket. And I made mine just a little bit more solid-looking. And this is the one that I will be doing for my great-grandmother, and then her six daughters. And so I'll be putting all six of their initials here. And I can't wait. I'm going to be stitching this cute little lady next because to me, that represents my great-grandmother who was Martha Butterfield. So I'm going to stitch Martha right there, and then I'll stitch her name down here as well. But I, this is one I really, really have a hard time putting away. I just want to keep going on it. It's one of my favorite, favorite stitches. And I just love it. I think Teresa's a genius, and I just love how she designed this. Super, super excited to continue on with that. So that's Shakespeare's Peddler, Peddler's Savior, a Savior's Praise. Okay, let me look on my list here and see what I have next going. Okay, I want to show you um, what I have going on for March now. I only have a few starts for March. I haven't filled in my calendar yet because it's not time for the starts. But here, this is my prim calendar where I keep track of my starts, meaning I write down, you know, the birthdays and the holidays that month. So I, I only have a few this month, but one I have is for my granddaughter, Sophie Bill. And so what I'm going to do for her is I know I've been going to do this forever, and I just thought this was perfect. So let me take it out of the bag so there's not a glare, so you can see it. But this is by Not Forgotten Farm. And as you know, I love uh, Lori's designs from Not Forgotten Farm. And um, if you didn't know, you know if you watch my <laughs> floss tubes because I use her patterns quite a bit um, to stitch and show you what I'm stitching. But um, this is a pattern that she's done quite a while ago, but I've always loved it and I just keep thinking, I need to start that, I need to start that. Well, what better way, what better time to start it than March because it looks kind of Eastery because of the basket, but because it is, you know, I love you a bushel and a pick, which I love Sophie a bushel and a pick. And so that's how we all feel about our grandkids. And so that's what I'm gonna do. So I haven't pulled um, from my stash yet or even picked the cloth, but, um, I think I wrote here on a note that if I stitch on 36 count that it might fit inside a 5x7 frame really well. So I'll probably be doing that. 
So that's the one start I know for sure that I'll be doing for March. But here's my tomato bag and that Christy made me that I've talked about several times before. But I think what I'm going to do, because I have so many large starts, I don't want to be starting, you know, really big ones till I start crossing off some larger starts off my list. So I'm going to take some patterns out of here that are smalls, and that's what I'm going to work out of for my March starts besides the bushel and a pick. But while I have this bag here, I did want to show you a couple of patterns, a couple, three patterns that I've added to go in my tomato bag besides what I've already shown you. So this is a new one, and it translates into Sewing Mouse. So this is called Sewing Mouse by Tra La La. And look at that cute tomato pin cushion. It's like upside down. The leaves are on the bottom and the pins are there and it's on a little pedestal stand. But isn't that adorable? So I've added that. Who knows? I might start that one this month. I don't know. Another one is um, Nightshade Bird. Now, I saw this when I went into Craft Center. And I had seen this chart before, but not really paid that much attention to it as far as what the whole chart looked like because all I could see was the front of the drum, which was adorable because, you know, it's a bird, but it's got the tomato on the top of the drum that looks like it's made from velvet. And it, and it does have this little picture right here. Maybe I can bring it up a little bit closer. Cass, is that good? That's good. So you can see the whole thing. So it's it's like a sampler because it's got the alphabet all around it. But look, there's a tomato down there. It's a little patchwork tomato. And then I'm like, well, that makes sense because, you know, the tomato pincushion is on here on the drum. But I just thought that was so cute. And I, excuse me. So when I went to Craft Center, <coughs> again, I saw it there and I saw it stitched up and I thought it was gorgeous. So I picked that up there and came home and threw it into my tomato bag and did pick up the called for flosses and we'll see when it comes time if I switch something out or not. And then the last one is, this is the one that uh, Laura was telling me about that I needed to get um, and add to my bag. So, um, so Brenda and Laura, so Brendan the cereal starter on their floss tube, they were talking about um, Christie's tomato bag that she that she had made and talking about the patterns that I had put in mind that are tomato patterns. And she's like, Lori, you've got to get this one if you don't have it because it's awesome. And I agree, Laura, thanks for pointing that out. And now it's in my bag. And Christy, she showed you this when she was my guest here that she's already got that started. And I love that. So that's what I'll be doing with that. I'll probably talk about this in a minute, so I'll just set that aside. And um, now I want to show you the progress that I've made on my February starts. So as you know, in February, I had a lot of birthdays because that's when I start is for birthdays and holidays. So let me just open up. I had a lot in January as well. I mean, look at that. So I had a ton in both. And so I didn't get a lot of progress done on each one of them, but they're all kitted, the fabric's picked, and I did get a start. And so I'm pretty happy with that. And depending on how much time I had to stitch that day, or, you know, maybe I could stitch on it the next day too. But this was a one dayer. I can tell that by how much I got done, but look how fun that is. So this is um, Love Never Fails. I started this on Valentine's Day, and this is going to be a wedding sampler for my husband and I, and so I'll be changing some things up as I go along, meaning I'll put our initials, I'm gonna put our last name here, Holt, and I'm gonna put the year that we were married. And I'm stitching mine on 36 count Abyssidarian linen by r and I'm stitching one over two, and I'm stitching with DMC floss, but, um, so I started with all of the flosses here that I keep in this cute little patchwork bag. So I started by pulling all of the DMCs that I had that um, was called for. And then I just kind of started switching a few out. You know, I could continue doing so as I stitch along, meaning 
I, I don't have a lot done yet, but this is what I have so far of what I know that I'm stitching with. I don't quite know what I'm going to be doing for their skin tone yet. I may use this. It looks dark when it's on the skein, but remember because I'm using just one thread, it doesn't look as dark. Um, so I don't know. Oh, I forgot to tell you too, on my heartstring samplery one right here, cast the one with on the red design board, grab that card, that library card. So when I showed, sorry, I'm interrupting this for a minute, but when I showed you on Instagram, I showed you all of the colors that I was using, but I didn't show anything for like the skin tones or the flesh tones. And so I just threw three DMCs, th three different ones in to see which ones I might want to use and various different skin tone colors for all of the cute stitchers on that. So I have 3774, 3779, and 407. And that's what I threw in that bag. I was gonna tell you about that then. That just reminded me when we were talking about that. But, um, so that's my start on that one. Love Never Fails. That's my little start there, but I love those flowers. I know, I know I'm just gonna love stitching this one. Okay, so this one was for George Washington's birthday. And this is Blue Skin which Blue Skin was one of George George's horses. So that's why, you know, Blue Skin, and look at that horse. I just love it with the cherries on his back and the cherry tree and the flag and, of course, George. And this is designed by Paulette Stewart of Plum Street Samplers. And I am stitching mine on Nantucket Brew, 36 count by r and &R. I'm stitching one over two. I did make a few thread changes. Oh, in my library cards a lot, I have this. So on, so I ordered this from Sophia Violet Designs on Etsy, this thread keep here. And she always puts this on her rings. And so I like to put where I got it from so I can remember. And then a lot of times I'll stick it right here in my card so that I remember where that came from. Because once you take it out of the package, um, it's hard to remember, and I just, I love them so much, and I love her work. There's so many um, different um, little shops in Etsy that I order thread keeps from, so I'm trying to keep track of them, so when I can remember where I got them from, or when they send a business card or something, I'll try to remember to tell you where I've gotten them from, and um, so here's my colors there, and... I used all of the called for, that Paulette called for, except for I switched my reds. So I'm using Holly Berry instead of the, I'm using classic Colorworks Holly Berry instead of the classic Colorworks used brick. And I'm using a Tennessee Red Clay instead of 3772 DMC. So those are the, these are the called for. And here's what I got to start on right here. I started on the tree, the cherry tree, and I'll probably just work my way across and all the way down here so that I can maybe cut my cloth down to that point and zigzag the edges. So that was for George Washington's birthday start. This was for Abraham Lincoln's birthday start. This is Lincoln's Eagle and I remember I only got one day to start on it, but this is one egg wing over here. And this is a little bit fiddly to do, but I love how it's looking. But I think that the rest of it is gonna go by very easily. Um, I just really have to keep on my toes and pay attention to what I'm doing here. So what I'll do is this one, and then I'll do the other one, and I'll do this down at the bottom, and then I'll just start filling him in. And when I said before, I don't think I'm gonna do all of this full coverage, solid stitching. I think I'm just gonna outline it, but we'll see as we go along. But I'm loving it on this fabric. I'm looking how my, loving how my colors are looking. I also, as you can see, got this one from Sophia Violet Designs as well. 
and um, stitching on 36 count raw natural in burl linen and one over two on this and I just pulled colors from my stash to do this. So here's the colors that I'm using in case you're interested in that. And I just think they look beautiful on this cloth. And so that's going to be gorgeous. I've given up on trying to put that in there. Okay, next one. You can see this patriotic theme I have going on. But I wanted to get a lot of starts early on in the year for uh, my patriotic stuff so that I could, you know, have these finished by July. So here's another one that is by Lori of Not Forgotten Farm. And this is Flag Folk. I'm stitching this on 36 count Wren, one over two. And I just, again, pulled threads from my stash. So these are all the called for, and this is what I'm using. And because of everything that's going on in the world right now, it's really hard to be able to get the called for colors. And so this is where I'm really, really um, grateful that I have the stash that I do. And so that I can just pull the colors that I need to go together. And so this is the start that I have, and I really like the amount of modeling on this ran. I think this looks very, very nice with this very primitive look. I just got started with the flag over there. I think that's really fun. This is going to be a fun one to stitch. And again, I might end up putting this in a square frame. I don't know. It's almost square, so I think I could get away with it. Okay, so this last one I have here in my stack to show you is Summer at Cherry Hill. I started this for one of my sister's birthdays, and this is by uh, Brenda Gervais. I've been wanting to stitch this for a long time, so I was really happy to get it started. And um, I'm stitching mine. I'll, I, I have to show you this, but I'll tell you about that in a minute. Let me show you my start. Okay, so here are, here's my start. I am doing um, 36 Count Latte by XU Designs, and I love this. I love how it's looking. And I did all of, the, I grabbed all of the call for with a few changes. So here's my changes right here on the back of my card. I think this must be one of my sample cards because it's stitched. I mean, it's printed on both sides. But anyway, you know, as, as the designer, you always get like a bunch of samples and decide which one you want to do. So I know that my cards that you get now, are it's printed on one side and it's plain on the back. And that's usually what I like to write on the back as a plain color. Okay, so here's my start on that. Let me lift this up so you can kind of see. Is that a good... Mm -hmm view Cass. Yeah. Just so look at that cute bird and the cherries. I know I kind of have a theme of cherries in here too. Let's see on blue skin I've got a cherry tree. On this one I've got the cherries and but you know it's it's spring. I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty spring like. Okay I want to show you this bag. Okay so I'm going to unclip this but look at this this bag that my friend Annette She's on Instagram. She does not have a floss tube. She's on Instagram as Sonetti So. And she's just been my friend for a long time. She lives here in Utah. But she made me this bag for my birthday and sent it to me. And um, look, she, look how she did this. She sewed the ring and then put a pair of my stork scissors with my little point protectors there inside. And then, can you, can you see that, Cass, uh -huh. while I'm holding up? And then she put the floss ring on here so that you can just add it, you know, tuck them inside your bag, but you can have them outside on the top when you're stitching too. And then she put these cute little poles on there and she made this one out of my, uh, one of my button collections, my cute little buttons, and she put a bee charm on there. But what she did was she took my flea market fabric. So this is, um, all of these prints are from my flea market fabric collection and she did a 12 inch block 
using my economy paper, my 12 inch economy paper that I've done a tutorial for that um, Fat Quarter Shop does with the paper piecing. So she she took this, so she's appliqued something in the center of my economy block, which is one of my flowers from my flea market flowers so along that I'm doing right now on my blog. So she took that, she appliqued, and that is darling. Okay, so it's big enough that it can put, um, I can put my bitty boards in there, or I can even put my small design board in there. I can take these out if I don't want them, you know, to stay in there, or I can just leave these little rings in there to hang them on, but okay. So I just want to want you to see how cute and adorable and darling that friend is, and then wait till you see the back. I'm like Annette, she's just so amazing. So and she did another, here's the block without the applique on top of it, okay? And that looks super cute, so she pieced the back also. Well, look what she did. She, she did one over one stitching and stitched Annette and I stitching. So look at that. Okay, I wanna bring this up close so you can see, but that, maybe I should have taken that thread off. Okay, look at that, that's one over one. There's Annette with the, with the brown hair and there's me with the blonde hair. And of course, yes, I'm stitching with red thread, but she put little quilt blocks by us too because we're both quilters and that's how I met Annette. She started taking my, uh, my quilting workshops. And so I've known her for a lot of years and yes, she is a sister stitcher. And I just can't believe that she made this for me and, and surprised me with it. And it's just so adorable. So again, 12 inch blocks and then she just added the top. So I get a lot of questions about bags. And so I wanted to talk, let me throw that over there. Wanted to talk to you about this a little bit because okay, I'll show that in a minute. Don't want to reveal that one yet. So there's been quite a few um, cloth tubers, which I have been so excited to see, have been using my quilt blocks. So remember this bag that I showed you before that Christy made for me, but she used um, my quilt blocks, which she does quite a bit, use my quilt blocks for my books and pieces the blocks and then makes them into a bag. So this tomato block right here, I brought my book so I can show you kind of what I'm talking about. I have two Farm Girl Vintage books. This is the first one. This is the second one. This is where the tomato came from. And so I kind of marked a lot in here where, oh, my heck, I forgot to, okay, I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so here's the tomato block right here. This is part of my corn, corn and tomatoes block right here that um, Christy used for this. So in my books, I have six inch and 12 inch cutting size. So what she did was took the 12 inch block, but just made the tomatoes. So they end up being six inches big for that. And um, then she used, this is my background of my Farm Girl Vintage fabric. She used all of my fabrics. This is one of my decorator weights. And this is my decorator weight from the back. But what I'm trying to say is I have seen several floss tubers taking um, and using and doing wonderful bag tutorials of their own and showing my blocks that they are going to put in there. So I do know that Nicola from Bumble Stitches is um, doing a project. Let me read, I wrote this down so I didn't get it wrong. Project Bag Along. So hashtag Project Bag Along, along with Liz from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. And so Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch and Nicola both, Bumble Stitches and Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch, did bag tutorials. And I know that they have ongoing projects for this Project Bag Along where they're going to put my blocks inside there, inside the bag, use that for, you know, the starting point. So I know that Nicola showed on her last floss tube, the Scrappy Strawberry. And so that's in my first Farm Girl Vintage book. So let me see. I kind of 
put some little tags in here so that I wouldn't spend so much time trying to find everything. But so this is the, my scrappy strawberry. And so again, there's the six inch and the 12 inch and Nicola did the 12 inch for hers. And she's gonna make a bag around it. And she has a really fun bag tutorial too. And I think um, that she said that Liz from Elizabeth Ankin Stitch is going to be doing the pie cherries block for my book. So let me see, let me show you what that one looks like. This, these markings may not have, <laughs> may not have saved me as much time as I thought they would. Okay, here it is. So here's the pie cherries block. And so that's in Farm Girl Vintage, my first book right there. This is what Farm Girl Vintage Two looks like and the inside of that. But what I wanted to show you from that before I show you some other books is Annette made me this bag as well. Can you see this whole thing in the screen? Okay, look how cute that is. I mean, is that not adorable? Annette, I'm just in love with it. So this is my Rise and Shine Rooster, which is in Farm Girl Vintage 2. So you can see it there in the cover quilt. So Rise and Shine Rooster, again, these books come in... I always do a six inch and a 12 inch block. There's so many, there's a lot of good choices in here to do. And I have done so many bags with these. Okay, I'm gonna open that. All right, so here's a 12 inch Rise and Shine Rooster. She used all of my prim fabrics. I can see these are all prim for the block, but for the background here, she used my new B cross stitch in Pebble. So I have a new fabric collection out called B Cross Stitch. And of course, Rider Blake Designs produces my fabric for me and distributes it. These are all of the prints that are in B Cross Stitch. And pretty excited about that. And so here's the front. And again, Annette, she does such a fabulous job. Wait till you see the back. But before I turn it to the back, want to show you she used um, some of my Be Cute Lace again for the zipper pull and put another little bee on there. And then she again did, did these little rings in here. So in case you want to add your scissors or flosses or whatever and keep them up at the top so you're not digging down at the bottom, you know, down at the bottom all the time. But she used more patterns for my book now look what she did on the back. Oh my gosh, look at that. Okay, so for these little tiny baby chicks, this is the friendly goat block. Let me, I need to put something over the top of here. Okay, so this is my friendly goat block right here. So it comes in cutting instructions for a 12 inch or a six inch size. Now, if you make the six inch block, but only make the baby chicks in the six inch block, this is how tiny they turn out. Are those not the cutest? So she did those. And then this is, I did a cross stitch block in this book as well. Let me show you that. So here's the cross stitch block. And again, it comes in six and 12 inch. And so she did the six inch size blocks. And so these are four six inch blocks. And so they end up being 12 inches, which is the same size as this rooster. And these are all out of my prim fabrics. So thank you, Annette. I love it so much. And um, I just wanted to, I brought my books out. I brought two other ones out to show you that not only do these have six and 12 inch blocks that can be used for the bags, but I've got my Spelling Bee book, which is also six and 12 inch blocks. Yes, I do have letters in uppercase and lowercase, so you could personalize your bag with your initials or whatever, and I do punctuation, 
but I also have many picture blocks in here as well. Sewing machine, typewriter, the dog, the butterfly, the apple, the canning jar, the vintage telephone, the little bug, the camera, the house. Here's another B block I have and a uh, little cake plate. So speaking of the B block, I know that I um, follow Crafty Cottage Stitches on their floss tube as well. And that's a mother and daughter. And Jeanette is the mom and Heather's the daughter. And they do such fun stitching and they're so cute to watch. And I do know, I believe, I, I don't know if they have a bag tutorial, but I know that Jeanette's been making some bags, but I know that she's been doing some of my blocks and Heather as well to go in there. And she did my honeybee block from my... I remember seeing that. I know that Jeanette did a six inch honeybee block and is putting it in a bag. And I think she's just doing her own bag. And um, there's so many good bag tutorials out there. And then I think that I saw Heather do my scrappy strawberry for my first book. But I also have my vintage Christmas book that has six and 12 inch blocks as well. So these are really fun. Some of them, they don't have to be Christmas themed, but it's really fun to do some Christmas bags with some Christmas blocks as well. So that's a great idea. And so speaking of bag tutorials, I thought I'd pull these in because, like I said, there's so many great bag tutorials out there. So about five years ago on my blog, I started doing a few of my bag tutorials. This was, I think... So this is my quilty zip pocket and quilty zip bag tutorials, meaning they're the same size, but see how this one's turned this way with the zipper on top. And this one's turned this way on the bottom. And I did my tutorial saying you can add as many squares as you want. This one is not quilted. This one's quilted, you know, with binding. And this one I did with my Calico Days fabric. So this one I did in 2015, I looked this morning up on my blog. So I'll link to these tutorials and they're just constructed the same way. If you want them bigger, obviously for cross stitch for uh, bigger project bags, then you just add more squares. But uh, I did this one in 2015 and then I did this one shortly after that. And with my Calico Days fabric, but I just put applique on the top. And this measures the same as it would for six squares if I just would have kept going. So I have those tutorials as well, step by step on my blog. And, but like I say, there's really no shortage for, um, for project bag tutorials. There's some really great ones out there. This is one that is made with my six inch honeybee block. And it's got a pocket right here because what this is, is in my Farm Girl Vintage 2, let me find that picture. Here I have, oh, here it is right here, my pin pillows. So see, I made all of these pin pillows out of six inch block and they have a little pocket and you stuff them and make them into pillows so that you have your little pin cushions, you have your scissors and things like that. I don't know, is that too small of a picture? Can I see that if I bring that up? Yep. And so you can just, instead of stuffing this, you just, you know, put a back on it and put binding around it. And then you've got your little pocket in the front too. I keep this in, I have, I've got um, my first set of Arafloss spools in here and some of my needles. And so I normally keep this in the little cabinet right here in the hallway next to my sewing room. And I'll be showing you that, my little cupboard that I keep my floss here. Um, here in a minute, I think I've showed you all of my cross stitch that I wanted to show you <laughs> and my books, lots of different ideas. And so now I'm going to take you over and show you where I keep my floss. I think I'll show you that first and then I'll just kind of take you around in my sewing room and show you the different, different areas where I keep my linens and charts and things like that. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here, this is the hallway that is just right off of my sewing room. So right in here is where I keep my floss. Now I bought this right when I moved into the sewing room. My sewing room, if you guys have seen my um, tour of my sewing room, I've only been in it for a couple of years, almost a couple of years since my daughter Cassidy right here got married. It used to be her bedroom. And so when I moved all my stuff up here, 
I that's when I bought this cabinet at Hobby Lobby. I was just there one day and I saw this cabinet with a whole bunch of drawers and thought that would be perfect to separate, you know, my flosses and what I need. So that's what I do. So before I open the drawers and show you inside, I just wanted to tell you what I have. I use these as a little catch-all. Now this is one way I keep organized because I don't have time to, um, you know, when I get some floss in the mail, for instance, or if I went to Joann's or whatever and picked up some floss, a lot of times I'll, I'll pick, put those right here. These are my DMCs and these are my overdies. And then usually on the weekend, as you can see, I've gone longer than a weekend. This is kind of piled up. <laughs> but I'll put them in here, and then it's time to put them away in their proper drawers, usually on the weekend. And that stops me from just stacking things up or putting them in a basket or keeping them all in their separate bags. And then I can't find them when it's time because I'm usually, you know, working on my... Um, you know, designing and things like that in the day. So usually when I'm opening the mail, I'll pull them out, put my DMCs here and my overdies here, and then I will put them in their assigned drawers. So back here, my first um, top two rows, these six drawers hold my overdies. And so let me open a drawer and I'll show you how I keep them. So I keep, keep them on these little vintage looking shower rings. They're very inexpensive. I have a ton of these. I've always used them to just organize my flosses. Now I know I've told you before that I don't keep them in alphabetical order, you know, num numer numerical order, anything like that. I just care about the color. So obviously this drawer is for my greens. But I do go as far as all of the week's dye works. Or I don't mix up different brands on here, meaning different companies. So this, this one has All Gentle Arts. This one has Classic Color Works. So, but within each shower ring, there's no, you know, they're not in, like I say, numerical or anything like that. This is another week's. So I have several of each company. Just when it gets too full, you can see, you know, some of them get so full, like obviously I must've had a Gentle Arts that was really really full down in there and so I just started a new one so that I can go through it so that's how I can you know just start going through them and sometimes you know I usually try to put them away neater than this but it's it's pretty easy to just neat them up here's my other gentle arts and so like I say during the weekend I'll usually just grab this bowl go back into my sewing room probably and just throw like all the blues together, all the greens together and stuff like that, and then start dividing them and then putting them back in here. So when I have a chart that calls for all week's dye works, I don't have to go through all of my greens. I can just pull out the week's dye works or vice versa. You know, so I have all my greens in there. Here's all my reds. Keep them the same way. And, and pinks as well. When I said reds, I keep reds and pinks. This one is my neutrals, like from Grace. I don't know why that's there. Oh, there it is. So, oh, I also throw these here, like when I finished a project. So I showed you earlier that I just finished my Oh Joyous Day. So I'm going to take all of those off of my floss ring and put those on the top of the pile here. And then it's time to put them away so I can play with my flosses. This weekend, I know what I'm doing. This is getting way too full. It normally is not this full, so I really, I've got some work to do, but. So I've got my browns, grays, blacks, all in here, and again, within companies. This is my oranges, golds, you know, peaches, things like that, and again, I have them. Some browns, sometimes it's really hard to separate like this, your browns from your golds. And so, you know, as long as I have them separated by company, again, I just, I go by color. It does not matter to me what company it is or anything like that. Although I do find out I use mostly Weeks Dye Works more than anything. I tend to, I mean, Gentle Arts and Weeks Dye Works are kind of maybe the same, but here I don't have as many, but this is what I'm always using. And these are my neutrals, my whites, my light beiges, tans, things like that. 
this drawer sticks a little bit, but it's good enough for who it's for and it works. And then here I have all of my blues, you know, aquas, denims to navies and, you know, purples. I keep those all together. Okay, so that's what I have here. Now these next two drawers right here are my DMC. So what I have here is, let me pull this basket out. This is my um, master DMC. I don't know if you guys have seen this, but I love these. This is my uh, paper for my Weeks Dye Works that's a conversion to DMC, my list. And but I love this thing because sometimes, I mean, believe it or not, I do not have every DMC color that there is. And sometimes you just need to see real floss, not just a color of it, but just what it looks like. And I love this chart because you can look here. Well, it's kind of awkward, sorry. But you can look on the back here and it's like shopping in a grocery store because I'm like, okay, I need to see where, you know, three or four, 3045 is what it looks like, blah, blah, blah. And it says it's on aisle 13. So I just go over here onto aisle 13, and then I find that color and I can see what it looks like, which is this right here, 3045. And I love that it has the real floss. And so that helps, oh, I'm dropping thread everywhere. Okay, so that's where I keep, um, in, you know, in this drawer is my DMC, and I just keep ordinary bags. I keep them separated. These are my browns and yellows. These are my grays, whites, and neutrals. But I just measured the drawers when I bought this container. I mean, sorry, this cupboard. And I bought these containers at the container store. And I love them because I can just take them out of the drawer and take them into the sewing room with my chart and my fabrics and things like that. And I can keep them separated by color. And I can just pour the flosses in here, you know, like all the yellows and go through them. So that's that side. And then this side, same thing, more DMC. Hang on. Grab that. Oh, wrong basket. Okay, so same thing, DMCs. I've got my reds, oranges, and pinks, my greens, my blues and purples got all the variegated DMCs here and the same thing from the container store. So it's not fancy, but it works for me. They're separated by color and that's, you know, what works for me. Now in these two bottom drawers over here, I have all of the anchor flosses and I don't use them a lot. These are like my anchors that I haven't put away from when I did all creatures, great and small, but that's where I have all of the anchor flosses in here and when I need them. And again, I have them in a little plastic drawer. So those are all together. And then in this bottom drawer, I have this basket. Let me pull it out instead of having to look in the bottom. I have all of my RF floss. So this is my um, prim RF floss set. This is my very first RF floss set that I did, and it has 10 spools in it. This is, um, this is, has 10 spools, but this is wool. This is RFL wool. So these are my premium wool threads done by RFL, which I love. And then this is my RF floss. I don't even know this box. I've opened up a million times. I don't know if it's full, almost empty, but almost empty. There's a newer one though. So this is my 20 set. Let me open this. There we go. So I have that, I keep those in here. I've got, keep my empty spools in here. And this is, what is this? This must be a kit, because this is from back quarter shop. Oh, this is my thread set for my Happy Farm Girl. And of course that comes from Fat Quarter Shop. So that's what I keep in here. I normally keep my bee bag that I showed you um, earlier with my little six inch bee. I keep that in here because that's what's in here is my art floss. Okay, so that's what's in this cabinet. That's what these little catch-all bowls are for. 
And then I'm just gonna go around the corner and show you where I keep my silks. All right, so on this wall is where I keep my silks on my cupboard here because I keep it in this vintage sewing drawers, which I love. And so I have all the MPI silks in here, thanks to Kimberly from Fat Quarter Shop. I don't know if you knew that, but she's carrying all the MPIs now. But look at that. So all of these, well, this one's divided, so I'll show you that in a minute, but these are all filled with NPIs. And this one is a divided drawer, so I just have different silks in here. I have some silks, of course, in kits, already kitted up, things like that, but that's where I keep my little divided things. And so that's where I keep in here and um, on this little table here that I've painted with my paint. I have vintage books in here. I actually used this piece of furniture in my Farm Girl Vintage 2 book photography, I believe. My book photography all takes place here in my home, and so I'm using pieces for my home all the time in the pictures. And this, these are the kind of things that I just pick up. Thrifting and old books. Uh, my sister-in-law made these little iron flowers. And of course, you know my love of Raggedy Ann dolls. This is my Prim Stitch. This is my Prim Village, not my Prim Stitch. And this I painted in my paint pitchfork and framed it, and it goes so well right here, I think, with the house. And so I don't get into my silts, you know, like every day, and like I kind of do my other cabinet, so I feel pretty safe keeping them down here. I just felt like my silks needed to go in this beautiful little drawer set. And so I can always pick this up and bring it back over into my sewing room if I'm really going through, you know, for the silks. But right here, they're safe and sound, and I know where to find them when I need them. Okay, let's go back into the sewing room, and I'll show you where I keep my charts. All right, so... Here we are back in the sewing room and you can see over here in the corner I've got two file cabinets. Now I bought these at a furniture store several years ago here in Utah and uh, I just love that they are handy because they're file cabinets but they look like a piece of furniture so I love that. And so in the farthest one over there against the wall is where I have like all my quilt patterns, you know books, things like that, a lot of my drawing stuff but then and this one closest to the red cupboard is where I keep my cross stitch things. And so let's go over there and I'll open a few drawers and show you what's inside. Okay, so up here, I can't even see what's up here because I'm so short, but these are like charts that I've had for a long time, magazines, things like that. You know, I've been cross stitching for a lot of years, so. I just keep those up there that I don't get into too often, but they're there. This one, these are all my patterns that I keep in here. This is like my lights, my, oh, remember when I showed you my stitching setup and I showed you these mag eyes? Well, look, they come in this white color now too. So I just got these and I put them, put these in here, you know, for my extras. Of course, now I can't get them back in because I want to. Okay. So, and then I just keep my lights in here, some things maybe that I have started, but basically these are for, um, you know, lighting, besides my lamp light that I showed you. If you guys haven't seen that, uh, my stitching setup, it's like a couple, three floss tubes ago. I don't know, I can't remember which one it is, but I show you actually how I stitch, my magnification, my lights, and things like that. Okay, so what I have in here is my charts. It may look very unorganized to you, but it is actually pretty organized. So what you can't really see is, let me pull it out. See, I love to use in my sewing room these magazine pattern holders. And I keep those within my drawers because you know how file cabinets are. Sometimes things fall over and things like that. But what, how I have my patterns here is separated by designers, not by Christmas you know, any holidays or anything like that. I just have everything from that designer in one bag. So here is my Blackbird. Here is um, all of my Shakespeare's Peddlers in here. You know, here's like my Scarlet House. 
and so I can just pull them out. Now, because these magazine holders leave a little bit of space on the sides, and I put the ones that only have smaller patterns, meaning not letter size patterns, I keep them all together. Here's all my Not Forgotten Farm ones, Madame Chantilly, and so I keep those, and I also have those there on the side. So whenever I'm looking for a chart or, you know, more importantly, when I'm wondering, do I have that chart before I buy it again? Because I've seen it so many times and I can't remember if I bought it or not. Then I come in here and I just know, like, if it's by Plum Street Sampler or somebody like that, then I know I just find their bag, pull it out and go through it. And if I don't have it, then I know I am safe to order it. So, and then that's the same thing for down here. So, you know, I have more prairie school schooler patterns than anybody because I've had those forever and they're my favorite. So here's all my prairie schooler that takes up two, maybe three of these. Let's see what's in here. Oh, those are hands on. These are like a lot of Quaker ones. So, and I do the same thing here. So these are Stacy Nash because they're all smaller ones. Anyway, so that's how I keep my charts, and I just kind of squish down the top of the bags. It's not hurting the charts. I don't bend those, obviously. And so that's where I keep my charts. Now over here in this cabinet is where I keep all of my cloths and linens. So on this side, whoops, this side I'm having an avalanche. Oh, so here's some cards, library cards that I'm talking about that I was telling you that I put them in here. You know, I have some hoops down there in these baskets or cross stitches that I have finished. So they're ready to go to the framers. These are just like my vintage cloths. What was that one that fell out? This one's prairie. That's my cork. And uh, because they're in plastic bags, sometimes I have a little avalanche. But here's my sample yardage. So I have that to stitch with. So that's what I keep in here. I have, I don't know if you can see that. Cass, can they see that? Uh -huh those white containers for my Kia. I don't know if they still have that size, but they're the smaller ones that they come with lids on them. So they can stack easily, I like that. So before I show you the center, I'll show you this side right here. What I have in this side is kind of more for finishing. So here's my double sticky tape from Fat Quarter Shop. Here's like a frame, a couple of frames. Here's a bunch of frames that I have purchased or painted or whatever and they're vintage or wherever I found them and they're just smaller so I put them in there and then I know you know when I want to finish something to look in here um this is that spray that I was showing showing you I have two of them here I have some trims and back here I have see those two containers with more finishing you know things and ideas that's what I have down there you can see Oh, I should pull these out and show you. These little... Yeah, can you grab them? Yeah, yes. I, have... I keep little finishing things in here, but look at this old thing. This is old. This is super duper old. I love Whitman's sampler boxes because obviously they have cross stitch on them. Can you get that other one? But they changed for a few years. I don't know if this is the same. This is also old, but not as old. This is made out of tin, but it's the same. This looks like it's a reproduction. But I have some newer ones, some older ones, and I love vintage tin, so they're pretty, I'll just put them back up. So they're pretty handy. Now, um, this middle one right here is where I keep all of my linens. I have them separated by, these are my um, larger counts. These are like 28 and 32, and these are my 36 and 40s which is kind of my favorite, my go-tos. And I don't have them separated per se by companies on who dyes them. I kind of have them separated first by size and maybe by size of fabrics. So I'll have a lot of my larger cuts of fabric, like my half yards or my one yards in one basket. And then I have all my smaller ones um, together. So that when I you know, pull a chart out, then I can, I don't know, maybe I should just pull this top one off or this one. I don't know, I don't want to have an avalanche, but these are the kind of things that I keep in there. This one's a smaller one. So this is a pretty good example of when I buy something, sometimes I'll buy a smaller one 
just to see if I like the color. And then I can use that for one of my smaller stitches. And if I really like the color, then I'll buy the next size up and then even the next size up that's bigger. So this here's a 12 by 17 and here's a 17 by 25. And apparently I really liked this earthen Edinburgh linen. And so this is how I keep my linens. These are all 36 in this basket. And then I can just pull out the baskets. I like things to where I have them stored, but I always like to have separate baskets where you can pull them out. And, you know, I can come over here, you know, to my little sofa. And I usually, you know, spread everything all over the place when I'm trying to pick a cloth, you know, to go with my threads. So that's that cabinet right there. And then right here is my ottoman. And here, come over here, Cass, and we'll open it up. And um, this is what I put my feet up on. I showed you this in my, my uh, stitchy setup video, but the last thing that I haven't showed you that I keep is like all of my cross stitch notions, like, you know, things that your thread keeps, just needles, like just rulers, whatever, you know. So that's what I keep in this ottoman because like, yeah, I could just have an ottoman that doesn't have any storage, but that's to me wasted space. So this is very handy. So I keep my, let's see, I have notebooks in here. You know, I'm always using notebooks to write things down. I keep a separate notebook for, um, okay, let me pull these out and just show you what I've got here. I'm always using a clipboard because I put my patterns on a clipboard sometimes and put them right here. You know, I showed you my little setup. Here's a blue one. And uh, I've showed you my setup before. But sometimes the pattern is kind of flimsy when you just lay it on here. So I usually like to clip it to the clipboard and then I'll put the clipboard on that and it keeps the pattern upright. So that's what I use that for. So I have this, I, I use my prim calendar for all of my starts and to keep track of that. But I have this cross stitch journal that, you know, I can keep track of projects. That is from It's So Emma from Fat Quarter Shop. Love that one. Now these are a couple that I got from Kitten Stitcher. And um, these are awesome because what I do is I have separate notebooks and I usually do this part here where when I'm going through a chart, I'm going to start kitting it up, then I'll write down the name of the chart and all of the threads that I need for it when I go shopping. And then I write down if I ordered it online, also like in a different book. So I ordered this for this chart, this color on this day, because I don't know if you're like me, but you get these different shipments and then like I'll put them over here in the bowl or something like that. And I'll be like, what was that for? Because it was one thread I was waiting for, and then I can't remember what it went to. So I always go to my books and I can see, you know, like this is what I needed. And I bought it from here, I ordered it this day, and then I can just go through and check it off when I got it. I don't know, it just kinda, you know, it sounds like it's a lot of work, but it really isn't. I just write it down when I ordered it and where and what it's for. And um, so this is where I keep, you know, that kind of things, my notebook, some other bags. This is, look at that. So Christy made me this smaller bag a couple of years ago out of my six inch block. So these are three inch blocks tomatoes. And so I keep those in there, keep things like that. Another vintage tin to keep things in. I've got, you know, floss away bags, thread drops, whatever I may need like that. This is where I keep my big bag of, you know, like my um, shower curtain rings or, floss rings like this. You know, I have all of that there. Um, this wooden drawer, I pull it in and out all the time. Um, see, I've got other bags. These are my bags that Riley Blake does for me. This one, <laughs> this one of my favorite. A lady never discusses the size of her fabric stash. And anyway, so here, let me just pull this. I don't know, you know what I mean by paraphernalia, what you need for cross stitch. So here's my Lister notebook. This is my this is my needle book. Now remember I showed you this, I have a tutorial for my needle book here on my channel. 
and so I show you how to do that and so I like to keep it in here and so when I put it in with a certain project then I can just fill it up with all my needles and things like that and take it this is a cleaner um, you know like a glasses cleaner but it looks like a sampler so I keep that in there so I can clean my mag eyes my magnifying lenses or whatever this is a vintage pin that I can put on a pillow who knows what I this is like my this is like literally my junk drawer right but it's stuff I use these are I remember I got these at at market uh nail work market a couple years ago from Stacy Nash's daughter and these are all beeswax you know I use 100% beeswax on everything this is not sure why this I do use my washi tape in here for several things but this is a new set that's coming out with my stitch fabric this summer and so this is a wide one I normally put four in here, so there's four different sizes, but I decided to do three different sizes in this one so I could do a wide one that says stitch. It looks just like that. So that's gonna be fun for packaging. Keep my library cards in here. These were, this is what the package looks like. These are from the Stay Sharp um, needle holders from Fat Quarter Shop. This is one of them. These are my point protectors, meaning, do I have any scissors here with, these are my measuring tapes. I do measuring tapes that match my fabric collections. Constantly using those. Here's some more beeswax. Here's, here's my needles. These are my tapestry needles. This is what I use to cross stitch. There's all different sizes within each tube. They're, each tube is not different size. There's several sizes within each tube. And I mean, I'm talking, they're packed in there. So that way I can have whatever size. I don't care really what size it says on there. I just care how it feels in each different fabric. So I just pull out which one is the best for me. Um, oh my gosh, this is this is a new thread keep by Sophia Violet Designs from Gina. And she sent me this with my last order and her daughter is making these. Is that too glary? Should I take oh, it out? Cute. But look, her daughter is embroidering this cute heart on this gingham, and then she puts it into a thread keep, and she uses my cute little buttons to put on there. Thank you, Gina. I love that. So I have, I have that. Look, I've got my little the vintage Mr. and Mrs. Farmer. What is that famous painting called? I can't remember. But anyway, with needles on there, you know, stickers. Stickers, I think that's from Kitten Stitcher, business cards, Dovo scissors. I keep, you know, this is just, this is my uh, point protectors. When I was showing you these, this is what I keep on my scissors so that when I put them in bags, they're not poking holes in the bags. I've showed you my counting pins before. I have th more thread keeps. At the bottom of my drawer, if you can ever get to the bottom, you can see that it's got one of my 10 inch design boards and I love that because then I can just clear this out and use it to stitch. Here's another thread keep that I recently got from the old needle shop. And got some vintage buttons. I showed you that before that I've got. You know, I just keep my needle minders in here. Of course, um, you know, who doesn't need cotton candy lip smackers? I do need it right now. Okay. And I also keep this very handy. I always keep like some wet wipes or whatever because that's how I keep my cross stitch clean is before I sit down to stitch, even if I think my hands are clean or whatever, I always just take a wet wipe and, you know, and use that on my hands and fingers and let it dry before I touch my stitching and that way I can keep it. So I don't know. I don't know why I'm ending up just like going through my junk drawer with you, but anyway, there it is. These are the kind of things that I keep here in my ottoman. Holds a lot of stuff. So my linens are in my red cupboard. My charts are in my file cabinet. And then just around the corner is where I keep my threads. And so I know this is a long video and um, I hope you enjoy it anyway. I do enjoy long videos. I like to, um, you know, make some tea, grab my stitching and enjoy it. So I hope you do the same. And I'm so happy that you joined me today in my sewing room. You can see how I keep my things organized and you can see my stitching project progress. And I will be back in four weeks and I'll give you an update. 
and show you even more stitching. Chat with you later.